What's going on everybody today? I'm going to be giving you guys a tutorial on how to install a Minecraft 1.15 server. Uh, I learned a lot from my last video, it got a lot of attention, and hopefully uh, I can make this one a little bit better for you guys so you guys don't ask as many questions. Um, the first step really is to just make a working directory, so let's just make a new folder and we're going to call it uh, MC server 1.15 and that's this is the folder where we are going to be putting basically all the stuff that we're going to be downloading and configuring so the first thing that we're going to do is open up that folder and now we have to go get the minecraft jar file um, we can do that by going to minecraft's website and up here at the top usually they make you sign in to be able to get to this page but there's a there's an easy way around it if you just add download to the end of the url and hit enter it'll take you right to the download page and then if you just scroll down because we don't actually need the game uh, you guys should already have the game we need the the Java Edition server software, which we can click get it here, and then there should be a link right here to download the Minecraft server 1.15.jar. We're gonna do that, and we're gonna let that download, and we're gonna leave this page open because we're going to need uh, this uh, this command right here. If Chrome scares you and says this type of file could harm your computer, do you want to keep the server.jar anyway? Click keep. Chrome does that for most jar uh, files, only because they could have some code in them that could be malicious, but this is straight from Minecraft, so we know it's all set. So we're going to take our server.jar, we're going to drag it back onto our desktop, and we're going to put it into our Minecraft server 1.15 folder, so that now we have our jar, folder, uh, jar file inside the folder by itself, like so. So now we need to write our batch file to start this with a certain set of arguments. So we're going to want to make a new text document all right let's we'll just call that start for right now and uh, we're gonna want to open that up with notepad we can do that by right click and edit or you can just double click on it and we're, we need to copy this text right here that I have highlighted into that text document so we'll do that now paste it in and what this is is a basically a, a command line a command that's going to be typed into a command prompt through a batch file and what this is going to say is use a program called Java with this much memory for this type of file which is a jar file and then it's going to look for the file name of the file so right now the minecraft server 1.15 jar does not match our file name which is inside of our folder right here so we need to take this and change it to exactly the file name of our jar which is just server.jar so we can do that here and we're just going to change it so that now server.jar is exactly the same as server.jar so now it knows to look for the correct file and then we're going to leave the no GUI on the end because that'll prevent the the, the minecraft uh, native GUI from popping up so it just gives us a nice command uh, it'll keep the command line open for us and then what I like to do is just hit enter and type pause. What that's going to do is after the server closes, it will stop and it will keep our command, uh, our command prompt open so that we can read any errors or anything that came out. Because if you don't put that pause there, it's going to exit right away. This will make you hit a key before it exits. So then we're going we're gonna to want to file, save as. This is how you're going to turn it into a batch file. There's two ways to do it this is the easier way I feel like a lot of you guys were having problems with finding the file extensions and stuff I'll show the other way after this but what you need to do is save as file type right here change that to all files and then what you want to do is take the dot txt right here off the end and change it to dot bat and click save and now we have our batch file and that's as easy as it is. If you guys know how to show your file extensions, you can actually just rename the text file to .bat instead of .txt, and that'll work. But if you can't see the file extensions, you need to enable them. And I'll show you how to do that right now. You click View, Options, Change Folder and Search Options. Then you would go to View, the tab at the top right here. And then scroll down in this list until you find hide extensions for known file types and make sure that that box is unchecked. Once that box is unchecked, you'll see the .txt at the end of the text document and then you can just rename it. We'll delete this and then we can, uh, let's just save this next out of it. And then we will 
rename this to start.bat. And then if it says if you change the file name extension, the file might become unusable. Are you sure you want to change it? Click yes. And now we have our batch file. So there's two ways to do it. I, I'm pretty sure I didn't save it, so there's nothing in this one. So let me just redo it real quick. But there's two ways to make the batch file. It's super simple. And once you are done, you have your batch file and you have your jar. And inside of the batch file, if we cl right click it and click edit, it should say there and our file name should match. Make sure that that matches. And then we can right, we can double click on it and we can start it up. And if you guys get an error right here saying that there's not enough memory or something, you need to make sure you have 64-bit Java installed. That is a prerequisite for this. So what you need to do to check if you have 64-bit Java installed is you can open up a command prompt by typing CMD down there and hitting enter and then just type in Java tech version tech D64 those are hyphens by the way and then click enter and it should tell you that you have Java 64 bit server VM installed right here so it'll tell you the exact type of Java that you have if it comes back and says, I'm sorry, we don't have a version for that, when you type in the .d64, then that means you don't have 64-bit Java. And then you have to go and get it. I'll put a link in the description for that. So now that we have uh, our server started up, it generated a bunch of files, and we're stuck here. We have to go into the end user license agreement, the eula.txt. We need to edit that. It's just a text document, and change this to true. And then we can save that, we can X out, and we can re-click on our start. And we're going to let the server load up now, this time it should work. Okay, so it's done. So now we're going to click, we're going to type stop. This is the way you top stop your server. Don't click the X because when you click the X it doesn't actually save all the files correctly and you could corrupt certain parts of your world or lose certain files. Uh, the way to actually stop the server the right way is to type stop and click enter and you can see here that it's stopping the server, it's saving a bunch of stuff and it's exiting. So um, go see how it exited right away though and it just shut the command prompt away? If I go back in and I put that pause back into my file like I had it before. will be good and now it won't go away so now we can go in and we can edit our server dot properties you and this is something else that a lot of people were having problems with they didn't know how to open this file up because that dot properties file extension wasn't associated with notepad the way to do that is to just right click on it and click open with there's gonna be an open or open with now when you click them either of them you're gonna get a window that looks like this on Windows 10 and it's gonna say hey I don't have an app to open this file so we're gonna click more apps down here and you're gonna wanna scroll down until you find notepad alright then click on notepad I already have it up top associated so it's gonna say keep using this app but it'll probably be down in this list for you and if it's not in this list you can actually look for another app on the computer to do it so you can actually go manually find notepad so click on notepad and click OK and bang now we have our Minecraft server properties open. So basically, the, I'm not going to go through this in depth right now, only because I have another video completely explaining that. I'll have a card up here for that right now. And um, yeah, I'm just going to go through the basic, basic stuff. So what you need to really know is your server port. Okay. This, if you guys don't understand, needs to be open on your firewall for your network so that incoming connections can get through and get to the server. Now, you need to be able to sign into your router with an admin, uh, admin privileges, and you need to be able to set up port forwarding. I have a completely separate video explaining how to do that, but if you do not do that, you're not going to be able to have people, like your friends, outside of your network join your Minecraft server. It's not that hard, it sounds intimidating, but it's a topic for an entirely different video, and like I said, I'll have a card for that up here too, and that'll all be in the description. Um, just 25565 is a default port so we're just gonna leave that right now and that's the only port you really gotta worry about um 
And then we're going to scroll down level seed. If you guys want to generate a specific world, you can do that. And uh, we're going to change our message of the day real quick. We're going to go to voice devs 1.15 test server. It's just so that we know it's all working when, when we do it. So then we can go file save. And that's going to save our, uh, our properties. So that's effectively the configuration for our Minecraft server. And now we can start it up again. And we're going to let the server start all the way up. And when it's done, we'll see if we can join it. Okay, now that it's done, I'm going to hop back over to where my Minecraft client is, which is right here. And uh, you guys can see that I'm on Minecraft 1.15. I'm going to go to multiplayer. I'm going to direct connect. Now, there's two ways for you guys to connect to a server that's being hosted on the same machine that your client or you're playing from. Now, I'm not hosting that test server that I was just configuring with you guys from the same machine that my, my Minecraft client right here is on. So, I'm not going to be able to do this, but this is what you need to do if you're hosting it on the same computer. To join your own server, this is just for you, you would type zero and then click join. Or, you can type in localhost and then click join. Now that is only if you didn't change that port that we were just talking about. If you had changed the port to anything other than 25565, after every single address you put in, you'd have to put a colon. Let's say we changed it to 25566. You'd have to put that at the end of it. Otherwise, it's going to default to 25565 unless you tell it otherwise. So localhost will work and zero will work just to connect to yourself. Now, that won't work for your friends or anybody else on the internet, and that won't work for me in my situation right here. But it will work for you if you're connecting from the same computer. I just want to make that clear because I got asked it about a million times. I also have an entire video explaining the three separate ways that you can join different Minecraft servers. I'll link that in the description as well as I'll put a card up here if I have enough cards left. Um... So what we need to do is, let's say you're hosting it on a separate machine in your house, like I am right now. I'm going to need to go get the IP address of that machine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hop back over to where my server is, and I'm going to go to CMD. I'm going to pull up a command prompt, and I'm just going to type in IP config. I can type correctly. I can't. There we go. And it's going to tell me my IP address is 10.0.0.204, and that's what I'm going to want to type in back on my Minecraft client. So let's go back to my client. And we'll go 10.0.0.204. Uh, oh, we'll join the server. And there you go. We are on our Minecraft 1.15 server. If I type in the command, or I type in the chat, let's go back to our server console now. X out of that. And you can see that I typed in the chat, sup, that I joined here. You can see, logged in, joined the game. So it's that simple. And uh, you'd give your external IP address, uh, there's a whole video explaining this, to your friends if you wanted them to join, but you'd have to port forward. So, yeah, that's it. Basically, I'm going to show you guys... Uh, one more thing, basically, how to op yourself on the console. So let's say I wanted to basically run commands and be an admin of my own server. My username is brad6305, so I'd type in op brad6305. Now, op means operator, so I'm going to give myself operator status. So when I do this, it says, made brad6305 a server operator. That now means I have access to all the cheat commands, everything I want on the server. I can change my game mode. I can uh, enable the whitelist. I can add people to it, disable it. I can op other people. I can ban people, kick people. That is what the operator status lets you do. If you don't have operator status on a vanilla Minecraft server, you can't do anything. So make sure you op yourself on your server if you want to be an admin. And now we'll go back to our client, which is right here. And if we push T, we can see in here it's, it's made us a server operator. So now we should be able to type in game mode, uh, creative. And now we're in creative mode and we can fly around. And yeah, 
that's basically it guys for this video uh, if you guys have any questions about how to really set this up configure it um, I do have a bunch of videos I'll link them all in the description down below um, if I missed something or didn't cover anything in depth enough be sure to leave a comment letting me know I'll try to respond to everybody and answer as many questions as I can and yeah be sure to subscribe for future videos leave a like if this helps you in any way possible please I really enjoy uh, when I see uh, people liking my stuff and uh, yeah I guess that's pretty much it I'll see you guys uh, in the next video peace out